Hmm. What's poppin'? Wait, hold on one second. Group? What? Stop. Bro, that's pretty serious, isn't it? Wow. Is it for sure, for sure? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. Oh. That's I mean, you know the only person to ask right now is Kim. She's the one who Oh, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. What's her take on it? There's video of Tristan making out with a girl last night. I know, Chloe's gonna die. I mean, whoa. I know it's keeping up with the Kardashian, but I can hardly keep up. It came to public attention in 2007 with a sex tape, and you became famous. So, was it a good thing to have done, looking back? I really believe with anything in life, whatever you do, you might think, I'm, I've made mistakes in my life, for sure. And you learned a lot from that. How did you feel? It was devastating for the whole family. And you cry yourself to sleep for a few nights. Then you hire a really good attorney and try to make something better or, you know, happen. The tape propelled Kim to fame and gave the world an inside look at the family dynamics. Kim, the little drama queen, she needs all of that attention. People are going to say all she's good for is taking her clothes off. Her ass makes money, honey. Who's the smartest sister, book smart? Courtney. Courtney. Me. You, OK. Who's the smartest sister, street smart? Me. Chloe. Who's the most conceited? Kim. Kim. I knew they were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your mom's favorite? Kim. Me. Kim. Do you agree, Chris? You know, I think it seems. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. it. Oh, okay, yeah, know. she's my favorite. We all Is know. she what? No, she's not. Whoever gives her the most percentage rates at the moment no, are her favorite. No, that's not true. <laughs> Just the most attention. Despite how good humored they are today about their differences, being a Kardashian wasn't always easy for Chloe. I do feel like now that I'm using my hands more, I don't know, it's like an intimate experience. My foundation just looks different. I feel way more natural. I like how it blends into my skin a lot better. I'm really loving a tiny baby wing just to bring out my eye. I have round eyes, so I like to give them more of an almond shape. I take concealer. I like to take off the end a little bit more and sh make it really sharp and clean. I guess it's a good little tip if you mess up. I just don't even care if I put concealer right over my powder. I just had to do this campaign shoot and they wanted bleach brows. So Ariel, I think just left the bleach on for too long and my eyebrows fell off. So now I'm just trying to get them back, but it's okay because thin brows are in. As we've covered several times before, Diddy is involved in heavy legal troubles. Several people have come at him from different directions accusing him of different types of crimes. On May 21st, model Crystal McKinney filed her lawsuit against Sean Combs, Bad Boy Entertainment Holdings, Sean John Clothing LLC, and Universal Music Entertainment Group. And the statute says that it revives any claims against, quote, a party who commits, directs, enables, we'll talk about that, participates in or conspires in the commission of a crime of violence gen motivated by gender, has a cause of action against such party in any court of competent jurisdiction. Lane explains that when she was 17 years old back in 1998, McKinney won MTV's first model mission competition. She was given a modeling contract and her career started to take off with her appearing in all sorts of major magazines. And then in 2003, when she was 22 years old, McKinney says she was invited to attend a men's fashion week event being held in New York. Now, the person who invited McKinney is only referred to in the filing as the designer. But according to McKinney, quote, the designer told plaintiff that he would be introducing her to Combs, which could advance her modeling career. The designer began to direct plaintiff's appearance as he sought to ensure Combs found her attractive. The designer then handpicked a black leather coat with a fur hood, a translucent chiffon, beige V-cut shirt, fur-lined handbag and jewel-encrusted jeans for plaintiff to wear to the event. Due to the traumatic events to occur later, plaintiff saved the unwashed clothing from that night in her closet where they remain in a plastic wrap. Wow. Then he said he had the power to help her career, continued to be very flirtatious. He also allegedly kept plying her with alcohol. And at the end of the night or the end of the dinner, he allegedly told her he wants to get to know her better. McKinney says she accepted her first hit of marijuana, but now believes it was laced with some other narcotic. 
McKinney claims that Combs then led her to a bathroom where he allegedly forced her to perform oral sex on him, despite her saying no. Quote, upon standing and walking, plaintiff felt more and more woozy and then lost consciousness. Plaintiff awakened in shock to find herself in a taxi cab heading back to the designer's apartment. The lawsuit says that after the alleged assault, McKinney didn't get as much work in modeling or acting. Eventually, she couldn't get any work at all. Upon information and belief, Combs had plaintiff blackballed in the industry and utilized his significant influence to impede plaintiff's career growth. Plaintiff became severely depressed as she began to blame herself for the assault and for sabotaging her own career. The assault led plaintiff into a tailspin of anxiety and depression. In or about 2004, plaintiff attempted suicide and was hospitalized. McKinney also states that she was married from 2006 to 2010, but According to her, her relationship fell apart because she had a mental breakdown connected to this traumatic experience. And this all goes, by the way, to the harm element of a lawsuit. What did you suffer? What are you seeking? McKinney's lawyers state in the complaint, quote, as a direct and proximate result of the aforementioned crime of violence and gender motivated violence, plaintiff has sustained and will continue to sustain monetary damages, physical injury, pain and suffering, and serious psychological and emotional distress, entitling her to an award of compensatory and punitive damages, injunctive and declaratory relief, attorney's fees and costs, and other remedies as this court may deem appropriate. When she met Mr. Combs, Ms. Lampro shared with him her dreams of working in the fashion industry. And Mr. Combs promised to mentor her and help her by introducing her to music and fashion industry executives, as well as assisting her with finding work. Mr. Combs love bombed her. He showered her with gifts and flowers as evidenced by one of the cards that accompanied the flowers that Mr. Combs sent Ms. Lampros for Valentine's Day in 1994. A photo of the card from the New York florist, The Daily Blossom, says, Happy Valentine's Day, love Puffy. Mr. Combs went so far as to invite Miss Lampros to his first Father's Day celebration, and a picture of that invitation was included in this complaint as well. Now, from there, the complaint says that what started out as a love-bombing, flirty relationship quickly went south. This is according to Lampros. Quote, Upon information and belief, what Mr. Combs displayed as kind gestures quickly manifested into an aggressive, coercive, and abusive relationship based on sex. These acts were not isolated to the state of New York as Mr. Combs would fly Miss Lampros to Atlanta to see him, where they would spend time together. Miss Lampros would also fly to Miami to see Mr. Combs at his home. The filing includes two photos of Lampros purportedly at Combs' home in Florida. According to Miss Lampros, Mr. Combs had a terrible temper and often threatened to harm her if she failed to do what he said, if he witnessed her talking to other men, or if she failed to take his phone calls. According to Miss Lampros, she was also not allowed to talk about her relationship with Mr. Combs to anyone because he didn't want anyone to know he was seeing her because she is a white woman. This person, however, his name is Rodney Jones. He lived, traveled, and he worked with Diddy as a producer. And he is alleging that he has hours upon hours of recorded footage and pictorial evidence, which has been included in this document, to support his claims. And I have to say, these claims seem very credible. Now, to be clear, Rodney, also goes by Lil Rod, uh, is suing Diddy and others, we're gonna get to who those others are, for $30 million, claiming that he was subjected to sexual misconduct for the duration of the production process of an album. It is a 70-page lawsuit that has been filed in the Southern District of New York. And he is claiming that while working on the album and living with Combs in New York, California, Florida, other locations, that Diddy repeatedly groped him, touching his, I'm sorry to say this guys, his anus and his crotch without consent and attempting to groom him into accepting a homosexual relationship by showing him explicit videos of others in Hollywood. Yes, they have named other artists, claiming that homosexuality was a normal practice in the music industry. It's also claiming that Diddy would walk around the house naked and force him to watch him shower. His ex-girlfriend Cassandra Ventura was the first among seven women to come forward with her story and brave enough to sue the music mogul and get this, there's video evidence of it. Things got interesting because Combs' ex, her name was Cassandra, she went by Cassie, 
and she filed a federal lawsuit against him in New York alleging years of assaults. Now, again, they dated for like more than 10 years, so she obviously was very close to him and knew his lifestyle. Her lawsuit contained graphic allegations that he raped her in 2018, that he physically abused her, that he intimidated her, that he made her have sex with male escorts while he watched. The lawsuit also alleged that he blew up another artist's car, his name was Kid Cudi, in order to stop him from seeing Cassie romantically when him and Cassie split up. I mean, again, all of this sounds insane if it's true. Well, Kid Cudi thought the accusations were true. He said, yes, that is factually what happened. But of course, Diddy denied those allegations. And he instead came out and said that Cassie was simply trying to blackmail him for $30 million. And by the way, that is plausible, right? We've seen tons of those instances, especially in the era of Me Too. What did you know back then, three, that four Cassie years ago? Cassie was gonna come forward. So what What did you, how'd you know, what did you know about what Cat? Because to, to hear I the- I could explain. Yeah, but- um, but if I explain how I knew Cassie was gonna come forward, that could hurt some people. I don't spend time around Cassie and I haven't seen Cassie in person since she was with Ryan Leslie. Was there something in her eyes that you saw the way, like now that- I'll put it to you this way, there are mutual acquaintances between her and I. Mm. And that's as far as I can go. Okay. Yep. He was in that man house and he saw that man wife who was like this. I was watching Puff. And then Puff was looking at the. He saw this, this this white woman. It was bottles on bottles on bottles around her. It was lit. Puff jumped out. Me and Cassie sitting next to each other. My wife right here, Cassie right here. The nigga jumped off the bar, came over and said, yo, yo, Cassie, tomorrow, I want you to shave the side of your head. And I was like, I'm like, what the f kind of request is that? <laughs> like, so when I'm like, what? so when I look up there, this white woman side of her head was shaved, my nigga. And the bitch looked good with it. So I was looking at Cass, I was like, well, I, I was like, you're not about to do that, are you? She said, well, I mean, whatever Sean wants, I'm gonna do. New surveillance footage obtained exclusively by CNN appears to corroborate some of the allegations of abuse against music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. The video captured on multiple cameras shows Combs wearing only a towel, assaulting his then girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, in a hallway at a Los Angeles hotel in March 2016. The rapper has, of course, denied all allegations against him. So I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, and I'm like, you know, I'm about to go into this next era of my life. And um, I'm gonna be doing a lot of um, positive things, you know, a lot of disruptive things. Um, a lot of things I really don't want everybody, like everybody to know about. Um, so like on the gram, everybody knows about everything. You know, I want a deeper connection with my fans. So I came up with this idea. I was going to get a special phone number and I was going to be able to give it to my family, my fans, everybody that's down with the movements that I'm about. You know what I'm saying? The team love movement, you know, bad boy, you know, black excellence entrepreneurialism, getting money, um, vibrations, inspiration, and um, just special unique content that I'm gonna share on this, on this phone. Jenner having over 20 years of experience with TV networks even helped Diddy when he launched his own platform, Revolt TV. All of the allegations, um, but there are clearly gonna be some repercussions and now they're feeling it at one of his companies in his empire, and that is- One of his biggest, actually. Yeah, uh, Revolt TV. Um, we found out this morning that uh, Diddy is stepping down- Temporarily. As chairman. Temporarily. That's, yeah, they do, they are, I, I think it is important to note that they say temporarily. Right. Uh, he is stepping down, which always made me think immediately, well, when do you come back? Right. Um, <laughs> and that's the tough thing that he's got to juggle now because he's clearly, Diddy is plugged in and he knows what people are talking about, court of public opinion. Obviously, the, D the Cassie lawsuit is settled, but these other two, um, we don't they know linger. what's going to happen. They, they, linger, they right. may end up in court. Guys, I think this is a very big deal. I do not think this is just, it doesn't sound to me like somebody who's just doing something to temporarily get out of the way while they resolve a couple cases. The fact he's stepping down, to me, 
means that these lawsuits are not going to go away immediately, he doesn't mm. think. And maybe, you know, he's concerned that other people might come out of the woodwork. He has said this is purely a money grab. You take him at his word that he thinks that. I think Diddy should have his own keeping up with the Kardashian. But instead of that, they should name it. Did he do it? That's all for now. Bye-bye.